right, guys. Uh, so uh, welcome to Clyde Plays Live. Uh, this is Clyde. We're on Twitch right now, but if you're watching this later on YouTube, um, you can, of course, come and join us for the live show. We do this three times a week. Uh, a lot of times we're just playing matches, but today we're doing a special event where we're going to talk about the uh, premium camo or captains, excuse me, that you can get for coal in the armory. So if you're unfamiliar with this, you might be a newer player to World of Warships. Once you've unlocked the armory, you just click right here, scroll down to this little portrait of a commander, and they've got a bunch of commanders in here, and it's kind of difficult to make sense of them all. Everybody wants to know who's the best commander. Which captain is the one that I have to get first? Well, that's a very individual question, and there probably isn't a right answer for anyone, or I should say for everyone, uh, but there is probably a right answer for each individual player. I've got Scotta with me here in uh, the Clyde Plays Live studio, a channel in our Discord. Hey, Scotta, how are you doing this morning? Ahoy, matey! <laughs> Fantastic. So we're, we're going to talk about these captains. I have not prepared to do this discussion, but we had a viewer ask about this, and this is something I've been meaning to do for a long time, which is to talk about all the, these different commanders. What I'm not going to do is rank them and tell you which one I think is the best. What we are going to do is take a look at each one and talk about why it might be valuable to have that commander, right? So Kuznetsov was one of the questions that the, the viewer originally asked, should I get Kuznetsov or Cunningham? Um, obviously, the question or the first question is you know what country do you need a captain for what country do you want to play uh that captain or what country do you want to invest into a coal captain for but i think what we'll do is we'll start with each of these captains and we'll kind of click through them these three down here i i have i've got kuznetsov luchins and aboinu um, i'm just going to call him philippe because that's easier for me uh, but let's take a look at kuznetsov first skada so Kuznetsov is one of the captains that everybody says, oh my gosh, you gotta get Kuznetsov first. And maybe you should get him first. Um, he's a very powerful captain. Um, and he has a couple of tricks. The number one thing that people talk about is, is will for victory. Basically, whenever your ships, the first time your ship hit points falls below 10%, it kicks off this will for victory thing. And it starts giving you a heal. Um, it'll actually give you a 0.25% hit points per second heal. And so it kind of depends on what ship you're on, but you can take that 0.25, multiply it by the amount of hit points that are on that ship, and you'll start healing that. And I think it lasts for, is it 20 seconds? Um, it doesn't last for forever. Uh, the other thing that it does that nobody ever talks about is the dispersion, right? It increases dispersion of shells being fired at your ship by enemies by 20%. So there's a sweet spot where this really works out well for you, where you're getting hit, you're taking some damage, but you're not taking so much damage that you're definitely going to die. And then this heal kicks off. Now this won't work in things like clan battles or training battles. So it does work, I think, in clan uh, in uh, ranked battles though, which is almost kind of broken. Um, mm -hmm. What else about uh, Kuznetsov is really critical? Or do you have comments on Will for Victory, Scott? Or what do you think about that? I think, um, I think you know, we're not really doing this kind of ranking thing like I've seen other celebrity do, but. Uh, as I've seen said before, Kuznetsov is S tier, uh, yeah, right? So yeah, yeah. He's, he's the will for victory. And, and again, this goes to all with all of the unique commanders or legendary commanders, or how, I think they're referred to as unique commanders. I, I get it mixed up with the other version. But yeah, it's unique. Um, in, all the well. these special talents, like we're looking at will for victory and emergency reserve, right? Those do not work in clans. They also don't work in a training room, but they don't work in clans, but they do work in rank. They work in all the other kinds of modes. Uh, but one thing that I know has come up before with people in our clan is the other stuff these guys can do under enhanced skills. Those do work in yeah. in uh, clans, right? So don't sleep on that. That said, uh, will for will for victory is awesome. Uh, not only is it a Wilford uh, Brimley? Did you say was it Wilf Wilf Yes, <laughs> yes. Wilford Brimley is awesome. Not only is Wilford <laughs> not only is he help you with diabetes, uh, but Wilford Victory. The heal for Wilford Victory is what everybody knows. You see that flare go off on a, yeah, on a Kremlin, and you yeah. know that you're going to have to keep shooting. Um, the dispersion thing is great. It also is an instant Damacon. It knocks out fires and floods. Uh, and fixes damage oh, modules. You're right. you're right. Which is like a thing that I think people sleep I on as well. About that entirely. Yeah. yeah. So like, because on like on that battleship line, you have a limited number of 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 the damage the controls as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so this gives you an extra DCP at that time as well. So sometimes that is a reason if you're burning and you think you're getting close to will for victory proccing, don't use your damage con. Don't just use let your it happen. Con. Just yeah. let this take care of it. So, but yeah, Will for Victory is great. Uh, and Kuznetsov, because of that, is very powerful. Super powerful. Like a really, really strong captain. This was the first of the of the ultra commanders, these unique commanders that I got 
uh, specifically for this and because I run a lot of Russian ships. At the time, it was mostly cruisers and destroyers. Uh, but now that I'm working the battleship line, Kuznetsov has always been destined to be my battleship captain. Um, although I think you could put him on Petro. I think you could put him on Delny. I think you could put him on Nevsky and you'd have a, a really um, a, re a really big benefit to any of those ships when you're playing them. Uh, the comment about Will for Victory not working in uh, training battles is because of tournaments. That's where things like King of the Sea is run. Uh, that's yeah, where uh, other other streamers will run their tournaments as well. So that's it seems weird at first blush, but that's the reason is when you run those formal tournaments, they use training rooms. Uh, for that the emergency reserve uh if you get first blood if you get the first kill in the game you're going to get an extra consumable scott have pointed out that certain things like dcp for russian ships uh for some of the russian ships are consumables and so uh, that's going to help it's going to give you an extra hull repair there's a lot of reasons why that's really strong too it's not will for victory strong um but it's pretty darn strong um the enhanced skills uh scott have mentioned the the enhanced captain skills do work in all the game modes everywhere wherever you are uh, and this one is going to have enhanced consumables um, which is going to work across the different classes as listed there on the screen you guys can check this out in the armory for the specific details um, of what it's going to change for you but uh, but it's beneficial for sure and once you've got kuznetsov in your inventory which you're probably going to get anyway if only for will for victory you can take a look at how that plays across the ships that you play most often there yeah, uh, one thing have... to note. Or, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to throw out there too on the on the on the enhanced skills because uh, Netsov doesn't have anything for carriers. They haven't patched in right. something right. special for him. If you wanted to use him on Nakamov, um, I wouldn't. But um, if you did, uh, he doesn't bring yeah. anything special to the table there. Um, so keep that in mind. Yeah, I think from at least what I hear from other players, you'll find Kuznetsov primarily used on Kremlin or Petro, right? Those tend to be his home ship for most people, but I think you could find him useful on other things. But that's a good point that putting him on Nakamov, you are kind of throwing away this consumable specialist enhancement, which you probably uh, would, would be better off to, to put him on a ship where that's going to pay out. Um, he does get a special uh, broad pennant. Um, you can do signal or signal flare when he gets his uh, talents kicked off, and of course the the shell tracers. You'll see that's pretty common on a lot of these unique commanders. So that's Kuznetsov. You know, I know we're not going to tier them necessarily and say this one's better than that one, but Kuznetsov is one of the really good ones. So I definitely recommend it to be an early get uh, for you if you play Russian ships at all. If you don't play Russian ships, don't waste the coal on Kuznetsov. Go get something else, right? So that's a that's a big question. Um, or a big question you want to ask yourself before you get started. Uh, I think Gunther Lutjens is probably the next most talked about one. I would also consider this to be a top shelf uh, commander. Um, Skata, what, do you want to walk us through Gunther Lutjens? It's, there's so much stuff in here, and I know you're a German battleship fan. Uh, this is going to be sure. something I think you're going to be very comfortable walking through. Yeah, um, another super popular captain because of all the different talents he brings and the enhanced skills. Uh, if you go across the talents and you've got your view up there as well but you know it's first one resilient um that's it, that procs more often than you'd think if you spot three enemy ships you just get a heal um you get that one a fair amount like i i used to use the loot gens on elbing um yeah and so like uh, i would get that on there i, I when i swing luchens over to maxwell immelman you get that a ton on the carrier which isn't as useful but you do get it to proc quite a bit um Next skill he has is the main battery loader. This skill is great for um, Hindenburg, uh, Weimar, Mines, all of your high DPM, high rate of fire um, German yeah. cruisers. It's also really good if you lean in on the des the destroyers. That's I I got this to proc a lot on Elbing when I when I hit him on Elbing. Um, so this again is when it activated once per battle, but when you land 140 main battery shell hits, you just get a seven and a half percent reload buff that sticks the rest of the fight, Dude, which is really strong. Seven and a half percent is that's big. Yeah, it's sick. It's that it's great. Big. I mean, you've been in matches where I've played Weimar and, and Luchens is there with us, and I proc that one a fair <laughs> amount with Weimar, um, and then it just gets worse for everybody. It's, the spirit it's a really, of Luchens is with us. Yeah, he's the there. It's a strong strong power. <laughs> Um, the yeah. one that I think the next one, I think the one that people see the most and talk about the most is secondary battery loader. This was a, this was really popular back on when this captain was available and all we had was like Kerr first and Bismarck in that line. For sure. Um, this power uh, made me move Lutjens to be my Schlieffen captain. 
um, because uh, it's activated once per battle, and when your secondaries land 100 hits, um, you get a 15% reload buff on your secondaries, which on Schlieffen is just god tier. It was good on Kerr first, yeah. um, but but it's really good on the battle the battle cruiser line or the or the whatever you fast battleship line, whatever it's called. And so that's when I Luchin's moved to be my primary captain on Schlieffen, and and that skill procs just about every battle, um, and is amazing. Uh, yeah, and, and then he, the, we look at the seven five on main battery, which we just gushed over. This is double that boat that buff, and it's probably sort of easier to get like a hundred secondary hits on a German battleship if you're leaning in and, and if you're having a successful run, you're going to get that right. It's going to prop. Yeah. So with the rate that, of fire on something like Schlieffen secondaries, with the accuracy, your landing hits like consistently, um, it just happens quickly. Um, yeah, yeah, it's so crazy. Strong. And then, and then, last but not least, he actually does have one that, that is specific for CV use, um, which is aerial equipment expert. Um, if you land uh, thirty aircraft armaments, right, which is just like rockets, that doesn't take long. Uh, if you're playing, if you're using him on on Richtofen, for example, right? right, you land thirty aircraft armaments, and you, now your squadron prep time goes down ten percent. That is super strong too. Um, if you're a yeah. CV player, that's a really good a good power. So like, if you play Richtofen, I'm sure there are people that use Luchins on Richtofen because of that skill. That's just a good skill. Uh, and it's nice that he has something that's CD centric. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and the cool thing is, like you said, it's it's various armaments, right? So you can, even as you're switching squadrons, you're still ticking up that 30 counter, right? You're not just having to do rockets, just having to do torpedo. You don't have to play suboptimally to get this to proc. You just play, you know, and then it'll proc, which is cool. Yeah, and then and then his enhanced skills, right? He's got mm. grease the gears for your destroyers, cruisers, and battleships that give you a 20 uh, 20 percent buff on main battery turret traverse for destroyers and cruisers, but twenty five on battleships. So again, yeah. that's great uh, when you're swinging those guns around on Schlieffen or Kurt First or Preussen uh, or any premium battleship you may put him on if you're running that skill. And the um, geometry for that is is very very supportive of secondary play, right? The closer you are to your target, the more degrees of rotation you need on those guns. So you're going to be close because you're doing secondary shooting. So that really 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 complements that secondary battery loader uh talent that he has yeah and if you're looking at like the battle cruiser line where so many of the the new battle cruisers have an aft turret that's 360. Um, yes yeah getting that Zeke turret around quickly that. yeah, yeah Schlieffen, uh you know I, I i don't know where that starts it might even start all the way down at like mackinson but like getting that mm -hmm. turret around even quicker because it's back there and you can swing it out faster yeah. it's just strong um He's also got a buff to preventative maintenance, uh, which is nice for a 45% juice. I can't think what base preventative maintenance is, it's like 30 or 35%. I'll take a quick and then peek again, while you're chatting about it. Sure, and then again, he has another one that's CV centric. He has improved engine boost. That's a skill that I always take on my CV captains because it gives you more engine, like 5% boost duration. With Luchins, you get 7.5%, which is nice. Uh, so he's he's really he's really strong and, and, and he gets used a lot in my fleet um, yeah. across uh, he lives on Schlieffen. I still I still use his um, destroyer build on different premium gunboat destroyers. Um, I use I use his cruiser build on on pretty much all of the uh, premium crew. I don't really probably use him on a gear, but like Weimar, Munchen, Mine. Anything with some DPM, rate of fire. Yeah. yeah. The preventative maintenance know. is 30% uh, normally. So this is another 50% increase on that. So a total of 45%. Right? It's yeah. the other. And, 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 and then in particular. You know, he's great right on, on, on Immelman and Graf Zeppelin and Eric von Lohenhardt as well. Uh, yeah. If you swing him to the premium carriers, he can do a lot of stuff for you there too. Yeah. So no, I, very, very strong commander. The fact that he's got four talents and all of those talents, some of those talents can be done on more than one class, right? Is Is really great. So... Uh, there's some there's some benefit there for sure. So that spot the spotting one usually pairs with at least one other, depending on what you're flying, right? So if you do whether you're battleship cruiser destroyer or whatever, resilience gonna work really well with destroyers, but so is main battery loader. Resilience gonna work really well with carriers, as is aerial equipment expert. Resilience gonna work pretty good with the secondary battleship because you're nosing in, right? So it's actually a pretty pretty robust and diverse talent pool i know everybody thinks battleships only but one of the things that we we've talked about a ton of times is how he's good in all these platforms and you've you've really kind of framed that nicely with today's discussion 
Luchin's on GZ, procs three of the four skills, says Frost Knight. There you go. Uh, okay, so that's Gunter Luchin's. Again, I think one of the ones that you should prioritize if you play German ships. Good, sh uh, good ship, good ship captain. Um, definitely worth getting. Uh, we'll talk about Philippe Aboigny now. So Philippe here is not as universally powerful as the other guys. Um, we'll talk a little bit about what he brings to the table here. Fire and Fury is uh, can be activated. This can be activated multiple times in a battle. Every time you capture a point, you get 1% to your fire chance. So you won't capture a ton of points with French destroyers, but you will capture some. And the fire chance goes up when you do. So I, I find that I use this one pretty well uh, with my Kleber, which is where Philippe is uh, assigned in my fleet. Um, he's also got Surge Forward, which is every 2 million potential damage you receive, you increase your ship's maximum speed. I don't get 2 million potential damage that often. This one's kind of hard to proc, I think. Uh, I don't know, Scott, if you've pulled this one off more than once, but I've, I've never done it, but I haven't had Philippe for that long. Uh, but the 8% speed buff is nice. No, I don't know if I've ever... I can't remember. A Two million is a lot of... I don't, and, I, and again, I don't use Philippe on Kleber, mm. uh, so it probably would be easier to do on Kleber, um, but I, I've never procced that. Yeah, I think that one's... It's just kind of tough to make happen, whereas some of these others we have... Uh, uh, you know, these other captains, it's a little bit easier. Frost Knight says he's procted on Carnot. He says all the time, so that must be doable, I guess, if you're playing Carnot um, up in the mix a little bit. He's got Rampant as well. Every Devastating Strike will speed up your reload time. Dev Strikes are hard to get. I mean, that's a flip of a coin, a roll of the dice. It's it's up to RNG whether or not you're going to get a Dev Strike. Um, and you can do it multiple times per battle. So if you Dev Strike all of your enemies, you're going to get a huge buff to reload. 5% is a reasonable buff uh, for Torps and Main Battery. But again, I just don't see these two being procced that often. Um, so the talents for Philippe are not as powerful as they are on the other guys. Uh, the enhanced skills are pretty nice. The survivability expert uh, for destroyers goes from 350 to 400. Um, that's 50 HP per tier, which I think winds up being, what is that, 2,000 hit points or something for a tier 10? That's 50 times, or 50 times. I never mind, I can't do math at all. It's 500 hit points. So it's not a huge amount more than if you took regular survivability expert. Uh, for cruisers, a nice little buff there too. Uh, so if you're going to already take Survivability Expert, that's a nice little assist uh, assist that Philippe gives us. Uh, survivability Expert increases the HP per tier on aircraft as well. So it's kind of the same thing. You're not going to probably see um, most of... Like, you won't be able to use both of these, right? This one's just for cruisers and destroyers. This one's just for aircraft carriers. And there's nothing for battleships in this line or in this enhanced skills section. So that's kind of Philippe. I, I don't know if I think really he should come in line before even some of the ones that I don't have. Um, I grabbed him for my Kleber because I like the fire and fury concept and um, the survivability expert, but I don't know that he's the most powerful captain. I, what are your Philippe thoughts, Scott? I, where do you use him? And you know how valuable do you think he is to a French, uh, French ship player? I think uh, I, I think one thing that's kind of interesting to point out, and Philippe will be my inflection point for this part of the conversation, mm -hmm. is the original manner in which maybe these guys were made available and what was going on in the game at the time, right? Mm -hmm. And so when Philippe was originally introduced to the game, it was when the French destroyers were introduced to the game, and he was originally available as part of that event, if I recall correctly. And so you look at his skills, and his skills are really... His talents really are for those ships. Yeah, that's for sure. So I think using him on Kleber is correct. I did not play that line. I got him back then. I did not pay coal for him. I got him during that event. Mm. Um, and, I, and I've and i used him on my Henry. Uh, he's my Henry captain and has been probably since the Commander rework. Um, and I think his ca I think Fire and Fury works fine on Henry because um, I do get you get caps and sometimes in cruisers and that'll proc. Um, I probably have proc surge forward on Henry um, with 2 million potential. Maybe, I just yeah. don't remember doing it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, getting a dev strike with Henry is realistic. But again, you look at those skills and those skills were really designed around the destroyers. <clears throat> uh, the survivability expert perk really designed around the destroyers, right? 
Right. Um, so I think it's interesting if you think about that. Kuznetsov similarly was introduced to the game during the Russian battleship event. So his stuff is really kind of, it's really good for Kremlin, right? Right, um, right. Cunningham, we haven't talked about him yet, but we will. He, he was introduced during the British heavy cruiser event, and yeah. some of his skills make sense for that line. Um, Luchins, who we just talked about, was not introduced during any German event. We thought he would come during German CVs, and he didn't. He kind of just came later on his own and was plugged in for coal. Mm -hmm. I think that explains why he's more well-rounded. Um, yeah. He really is more well-rounded than the other guys. Um, He's and so, the most diverse in terms of his capabilities, I think. Yeah, yeah and so, really so I, I, th I like, I, you know, I like Philippe Bueno. I, th I think it's cool. I think his skills are kind of neat. I probably should have him on Claber. I mm. definitely use him on Marceau and Eigel and uh, a lot of the premiums that you've got. Love. Terrible. <laughs> I think yeah. that's the premium one. Yeah, um, so he sure. gets used there for me, and that's probably more. That's probably better than Henry. Uh, but for whatever reason at the time, because I didn't have that tech line and I wasn't I wasn't going to put him on Goupard, um, I put him on Henry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's totally fair. Right. That, those are the kinds of decisions that players make all the time. Right. And I think your comment about like what was going on in the game at the time shapes these captains. Uh, we had a comment in here. GMAC said Yamamoto procs an extra charge of consumables for a crack. And I get that once every never. Um, you also get a heal on Yamamoto when he gets a Kraken. Um, the thing about those early special captains, and, and we may or may not talk about Yamamoto and Halsey uh, in today's discussion, but uh, those guys are so early. It was when Wargaming was very first testing this concept of having special camos in the PC version of the game. And so they made it really hard to proc them. They didn't want to make them too powerful. And so those guys are really hard to proc for sure. Um, yeah, I've, I watched Yamamoto give uh, our friend and, and, and erstwhile viewer of the channel, Club, uh, Kablamo, a, a heal one time after he got a crack and in the middle of an epicenter match. It was amazing. Me and me and Kablamo were confused about what was going on. Scott explained it to us. <laughs> I was like, you're running Yamamoto on your Kitakaze. And he's like, oh, does that do a heal? Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it does a heal, buddy. It was he's like, epic. cool. Yeah, Kablamo is a really good player, but I, I don't think he was paying attention that day. Um, we'll talk about Cunningham next because you brought him up. And plus, I know that was one of the questions Salty, uh, the captain Salty was asking about. Um, although as soon as we finished talking about Kuznetsov, Salty said, I play loads of Russian ships, so Kuznetsov it is. And he, he left and went and bought the captain already. <laughs> it should be. He should buy Kuznetsov. Kuznetsov is a good pick, I think. Cunningham, I think, is interesting. And I, prob I probably should have gotten Cunningham before I got uh, Aboineau, before I got Philippe. But um, I didn't. And we'll get Cunningham soon. Uh, so Cunningham is an outstanding British Admiral who fought in the Anglo-Boer War. Uh, that's all interesting stuff. Let's talk about his talents. He's got equipment spoils, which is once per battle. Uh, if you destroy two ships, you get an additional charges for your ship's consumables. So you get a plus one to all your consumables once you get that second kill. It does not apply to aircraft carrier squadrons, it says, just to the ship's consumables. That's important to understand. Uh, lightning fast. Once per battle, if you cause two floods, uh, then your ship will increase the speed of uh, squadrons and ships. Uh, so your airplanes and your boat will go faster if you flood twice. Ruthless uh, Witherer achievement, which again is kind of hard to pull off. You can do it, but if you get Witherer, and, and as Scott pointed out, this came out with those British heavies, which are HE focused. Uh, it's going to make sense, you know, when you look at that history. It's going to increase your uh, battery reload speed. I mean, battery reload speed, your squadron prep time, and your torpedo to tube reload speed as well. So that's a 10% buff to all three of those things if you get Witherer. So, you know, Witherer is a little bit tough to proc. Two floods isn't, isn't easy, but it's not hard. And two kills isn't easy, but it's not hard, right? Um, so I think Cunningham in general is probably not as easy to proc as some of the other guys. But, uh, you know, 140 gun hits for Lugins isn't a guarantee either. So... You know, maybe the couple of floods isn't as bad as I think. What do you think about the the ability to proc those talents and, and then what they bring to the table, Scott? Uh, I think, I think ruthless the uh, witherer one is that's harder to pull off. Um, you're gonna get that. I mean, most unless you're like super unicum guy in the right scenario against the right kind of players in the right boat, you're probably not gonna get a witherer until like the back half of the match, right? 
Yeah, it's um, late match. Every some time. folks, some guys will get a witherer like in the first seven or eight minutes because they're like super unicums. But that probably also isn't with a British ship. Um, Not commonly. That said, I I really like Andrew Cunningham. I for me, he is my daring captain. Mm. I like to th- I like to contextualize this with what tech tree ship they live on. Yeah, um, that's good. So like. I have great luck on daring um, procking equipment spoils, uh, getting two kills in a in a hydro cap contesting DD. I've procked that early in matches many times, taken out destroyers and and had good luck with that. And it's great because you get an extra heal and an extra smoke yeah, and an extra yeah. charge of hydros and you're just fat and happy on a destroyer with all that stuff. Um, well, and like you said, contextualizing that with the ship, like what are you going to get? when you proc, right? If on a DD where you're getting a heal and an extra smoke, like that's pretty cool, right? The extra heal is worth a lot. So yeah. there's some value in making sure that you're choosing a ship that's going to benefit from the things that happen when they proc too. You know, likewise, equipment spoils on the rush on the on the cruisers, super strong because you're getting an extra heal, especially on all the yes. cruisers that have monster like heals. heals like and then Goliath again, on if you wanted to use Cunningham on Conqueror, getting another monster heal on Conqueror um, is also powerful. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, like I know any battleship or any cruiser is powerful, but a super heal yeah. is even better, right? So I don't think, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to sound like I'm a great player, but I get two kills a fair it's not impossible to do amount of time, yeah. right? So, so I get that one to proc quite a bit. Lightning fast, um, getting two floods. That one's interesting uh, with, if you actually use Cunningham on British CVs, um, you can get that one to proc. Um, so you get faster planes. I think that's kind of cool, which is really nice on British CVs because the planes aren't exactly the fastest. Right. Um, the getting that with a again with like daring, I have that one proc a lot, um, and that makes the daring scoot around quicker, which is great. Um, and then and and then ruthless with the witherer. Uh, if you run him as your conqueror captain, you can. I use Andrew Cunningham. Like I said, he's my daring captain. Um, He's my Thunderer captain. Right, right. I was going to say, he, the premiums, you can put him on. Yeah, too. he's my Thunderer captain. He gets a lot of work done there. Um, I could see using him on Goliath. I just don't play Goliath a ton. Um, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm more inclined to play British battleships or, or British destroyers than I am those cruisers. I just tend to avoid them. But um, mm-hmm. it'll be interesting to see with the new British battle cruiser line if there's a value to his skills that map to those ships. Um, yeah, you know, that might be a thing as yeah. well, where if you're if you're getting if you're if right now you don't have Andrew Cunningham and you don't have a 10 point captain ready to go when that line comes out, maybe get Andrew Cunningham and level him up with that line, because that's that's what I've done in the past with these captains. If I've, I've got them yeah. to coincide with a line and that lets me level them up while I play a line. It may not be the line I want them on long term, but right. it's a heck of a lot right. better than dumping Captain XP into them to. Uh, to load them up you know taking a look at what's on the talents list right if if the british battleships come out and they wind up having a reasonable amount of speed and some torpedoes and some secondaries and stuff like you're gonna get an extra heal right here you're gonna you're gonna enhance the speed if they come with speed boosts like we think they might like they talked about on the the dev blog um and if you look at ruthless if you're gonna get torpedoes on some of those uh battle cruisers you know the torpedo reload time this could be a reasonable captain for the battle cruiser line depending on what form those ships take when they finally do come out so yeah and, and there's something what there. i can what i can say based on my knowledge of that line from the dev blog and publicly available sources is i agree i think all of his talents will apply well to those to those lines as they've described them to us on the dev blog yeah yeah um, continuing on, looking at the enhanced skills. So for an, a CV, uh, the a, a damage reduction of minus 11.5. I, I don't remember what regular is here. It's probably like 7.5 or something. So that's a nice little bump. Um, and then the consumables specialist is a good one on pretty much any ship. Uh, and so looking at this, um, reload times of all of these consumables are reduced 12.5% instead of, I think, 10% is what the normal is on that. So definitely a, a benefit to any ship, especially one that has multiple consumables, you know, daring uh, any of those upper tier British DDs that have things like you've talked about, um, like uh, hull repair and smokes and stuff like that's gonna be mm-hmm. beneficial. Yep, yep. Uh, so that's Andrew Cunningham right there. Let's move on along. Do Jersey Swirsky. Now, Jersey Swirsky, I don't have either, uh, but I, I definitely shopped this guy a little bit. So uh, he's got an AA gun expert and torpedo armament expert uh, 
talent with the adrenaline rush enhanced skill. I know this is a, a captain you've had for a while, Scott. Uh, what, you know, when you were looking at buying him, what ship did you plan to buy him for? And do you still use him on that same ship? Uh, I actually, this is the most recent one of these guys that I picked up. I didn't oh. pick him up until a, two months ago, maybe. Oh, I thought you had him uh, longer. Maybe we just talked about Swirsky uh, a lot. Maybe. No, Heavy McD, clan, former clanmate, uh, had him. I think still, he was the guy clan. in our clan that had him a really long time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but but yeah. Anyway, I, I use him on Holland mm -hmm. when he came out. That that was the only. I mean, that's still the only line for um, for the for the euros right yeah and so so he, and if you look at his talents aa gun expert and torpedo armament expert they really harmonize or are, are harmonize well with holland um that said his enhanced skill of adrenaline rush is really good on smalland and so yes. I I use him on I, I use him built out the way I want for Smallland uh, because I think that AR helps with its guns. And then it's you still get the benefit of a gun expert. You still get the benefit of torpedo armament expert. Uh, I still think those skills are probably better suited for Holland, but I happen to have Smallland and I use him on Smallland. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, one of the things we talk about with that Pan Euro line is how tricky it is sometimes. Man, my camera is not loving the focus today. Let me try that again. Find me, camera. Um, anyway, um, I'm moving around too much, sit too far back. The uh, we, we talk about those three tier 10 destroyers that you've got, that you've got Holland, you've got Smallland, and then you've got Ragnar now, all of which would dr definitely benefit from Adrenaline Rush, but not all of which would benefit from the Torpedo Armament Expert, right? So this that's the kind of thing where this one is, uh, if you hit eight torpedoes, which is hard to do, you'll get a torpedo buff. So it's going to be more of a Smallland Holland build, I think, and the AA Gun Expert, for some of the reasons you talked about, makes sense for for uh, for Holland there, perhaps more than Smallland. But Adrenaline Rush is going to be valuable on all three of those ships. Uh, so if you built this guy uh, for your Smallland, you could probably use him uh, on a couple of those others. But Ragnar probably needs its own captain, you know. Uh, and I feel like Swirsky's probably not your best Ragnar captain, but hard there's to say. A reason, there's a reason for me that he was the last one of these guys that I got. In fact, yeah. I... I did not pick him up until recently uh, because I didn't have anything else to buy with Cole. And um, so I finally picked him up. But uh, I, for what I play, I find his abilities are, are limiting. They're pretty neat, but um, I don't I don't play a ton of Holland and randoms or Smallland and randoms where you're going to get 20 plane kills. It's tough. Right? And, yeah. And, land, and I'd be so happy if I landed eight torpedoes on Holland that it'd be neat if they reloaded fast, but they reload fast to begin with. So like I, I actually don't think, you know, he's neat, but I don't think he's nearly as powerful as, as really any of the other available guys. Yeah, I, I, he might be on par with Philippe, but if I, I mean, I obviously chose to buy Philippe first, so I kind of had a similar uh, resolution uh, when I uh, was shopping around for these guys. So, you know, I, I think he's probably worth getting, but not first, right? Uh, and again, I, I did say that I wouldn't tell you guys what order to buy these, in, but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Because conversation is neat. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, Luchins, Kuznetsov, easy recommendations, easy buys for people who play those countries. Swirsky, you know, when you got extra coal, you know, is kind of, I think, where we're landing on this one. I do love all these adrenaline rush buff, though. That's nice. And part of the rub, too, is if you look at Cunningham, Luchins, Abuenu, and, and Kuznetsov, all yeah. of those are fully fleshed out nations with multiple exactly. tech lines. Exactly. Exactly. Some of them, all of them, sans France, even have a CV line. Um, so you've got options there with, with the ability to move these captains around and utilize them in different ways, premiums and things of that nature, coal boats that are available. Uh, I think there's coal boats available for all these nations where you can swing one of these captains over and get them some experience. But with Jersey Swirsky, um, not a lot of choices in that European line, unless you're a big Varebus Unitas player. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, is there a 
European cruiser. There may, I probably is, but I can't think what it is off the top of my head. It's destroyers. It's the destroyer line. It's Ragnar and Smallland at 10. Those are hard to get, if not impossible to get now. He just doesn't have as much utility to me, and that's why I waited to get him. And honestly, I was really uh, hesitant to dump Cap Commander XP into him. I ended up doing it because I wanted him to be playable for competitive. Right. right. Um, but uh, I just, I for me, he's not the, the top getter. If you're if you're a big Holland player, if you're a big Smallland player, mm -hmm. then yeah, you go get it, right? And it fits your port. And Holland, I think, is still pretty popular. Um, it's particularly popular, I think, on the EU servers. I see a lot of Hollands over there when I play high tier, which isn't very often because I don't have a lot of choices up there. Um, but Holland's pretty popular. Daring's really popular over there too. But uh, so, you know, Cunningham, Swirsky, I think they have homes for those those ships. We see them a lot on NA as well, but I think Swirsky is, uh, you know, the the rarity of those ships smallland and ragnar uh means that like that problem's not particularly complicated for that many players but you know again you you really don't want the same build on any of those three boats and yeah. that's the problem i have with the pan euro line and this is actually something i i want to make a whole video about this but um I need to formulate my thoughts where the pan euro line in specific is just really really difficult to share captains across those three dds and the other side of that coin is the thing you just said there's only one line of ships on pan euro so like that's a lot of captain grinding for a country that only has like 15 ships you know mm -hmm. and most of which you probably don't own you know right. most of the you you're you're one of the people i know that has that problem with all three of those tier 10 destroyers i only have two right. of them um but even then, Smallland and Holland have different builds. That's I right. would contend. I, I have. I run kind of a hybrid build on Smallland. I know. I. I'm sure it's possible to run a full gun build on Smallland that would also work on on Ragnar. Um, but I don't like. I don't like Smallland that way. That's just me. I run a more of a hybrid captain on it. So I, if I had Ragnar, I would need another 18, 19, 20 point captain to get the most out of that ship. Uh, and that's that's frustratingly expensive, and and I do not think that captain's Jersey Swirsky because I just don't, he doesn't have enough skills that benefit that ship in my opinion. Yeah, I I agree. I feel like he might be a little bit overpriced. You know, 175,000 coal for not being as good as the other guys that are 175,000 coal. But yeah, I'd and you got to remember, have... oh, God. you know, when when Swirsky was introduced, he was part of it uh, of a campaign. Yep. They had put a cam. Yep. They put a campaign in the game to get him. That was a time limited campaign. I I don't remember how many months it was available. Um, you I had missed to, it, as you can see. Yeah, <laughs> I missed it. I missed it as well. I bought yeah. him with Cole. You had to play. It was all these campaign missions that had to be done in the Pan Euro destroyers, and so um, I did not accomplish that to capture him. And then it was a while later before they put him in here and let us all buy him for Cole. So. Yeah. I'd rather have them not adjust the prices because they would probably just make the other guys more expensive and leave Swirsky at 175. So we'll just, <laughs> just be glad for what we got <laughs> and we'll leave it alone. But um, Brandon chat says they're in need of a DD split for the Pan Euro line, uh, in his opinion. And I think that would be good. Um, you know, I think if we uh, if we had more ships there or, or even a light cruiser line would be really interesting. Um, and I think that would make these captains and ships a little bit more playable together. And for those of us trying to optimize captain grind uh, more ships and even more tech tree ships is a good thing um when that happens but anyway so that's Swirsky. um i kind of wonder do we want to talk about like halsey and and yeah uh, your, your three other legendary or epic or unique commanders are, are halsey yamamoto and uh luigi sansonetti oh and sansonetti and, yeah and those are also really great and you don't get them through coal uh so i don't know because we were talking about what you could get for coal we um, were one interesting thing about Sansonetti is you can get Sansonetti for coal, but <laughs> indirectly because yeah, you have to the hard buy way. the containers for it. And we have a clan member, uh, Burger with a scope, who bought Sansonetti with a bunch of coal. What's his thing called? Resolute, Resolute and rapid and containers rapid. are six thousand coal a pop. They were originally introduced during the Italian cruiser event, which was which was how you could earn sense in 80 back then. I don't remember what the symbol is for them. Here's Luigi. I guess we can look at his uh, talents and personalizations right here. You probably have him on Cunaberte. I probably do, actually. Uh, you can basically buy enough containers at 6,000 cola pop to eventually just unlock Sansonetti. 
Uh, the more unique ships or uh, icons you get, the cheaper it's going to be for you in terms of coal. But that cost is variable. And I think uh, Berger did the math and it actually came out to be like about 150,000 coal for him to buy Luigi, uh, which is cheaper than the other guys. Now, your mileage may vary depending on how many duplicates you get, stuff like that. Yeah. And um, to be fair, you so, get a bunch of stuff out of those crates that you get. Regia, Marina camos, every crate. And those aren't yeah. terrible, like if you yeah. want some paint and you get some flags or some Captain XP or some free XP. So like, if you wail into those with coal, it's not the end of the world. It's unfortunate that they haven't brought those crates back. In um, any other way. Like, like I, th I thought they might come back to the Italian Destroyer event. And instead we got Australia, Italian Destroyer containers that give you a campaign that's different, that unlocks multiple flags on ships. So mm -hmm. anyway. No, that's a good point. Uh, GMAC did some research for us. He says it costs four duplicates. So, you know, it, it that's not a favorable exchange rate. That's the normal one, four duplicates to buy one that you don't have. Uh, one tactic and technique that I think most people know, but just in case you don't, is you want to spend your duplicates last. You want to leave them in the list of duplicates. Don't, don't spend them as quickly as you get four of them because anytime you're doing that you're increasing the odds that you're going to get an additional duplicate as you're buying the containers so um, go through this carefully buy the boxes one at a time take a look at them see what you get it's a really annoying process um, if you're trying to do it as a bulk buy and just do it in one day but Sansonetti is a pretty powerful captain we'll take a quick look at what he brings to the table uh, he's got a rapid fire talent which basically can be activated if you get the confederate achievement your main battery reload time decreases 15 percent confederate's not immediately a guarantee every time you log into a match uh, but 15 percent reload time buff is really nice especially with the longer reloads on the cruisers uh, but it works well for the destroyers as well uh, far reach uh, is activated uh, when you destroy an enemy ship your ship's main battery firing range increases this you can do most battles, right? Most battles you'll get a kill um, once you get comfortable with the ship that you're going to assign Sansonetti to. And so your range will increase 8%. Uh, Forrester says Sansonetti is a must for the new Regia Marina DD line. First kill gives a gun range, bo gun range boost. And that's for sure, right? So you can extend your reach uh, with those DDs. It's really nice there. It's good for the cruisers too, but because uh, their range is good, but not amazing. Um, and you'll find that it's, it's going to be useful on that platform as well. So that's what far reach does concealed reserves uh says activated when you get uh, 100 main battery hits you'll get a boost uh or consumable action time boost so your smoke's gonna last longer your hull repair is gonna last longer for ships where you've got that consumable dcp and the spotter plane are probably a little bit well the spotter plane's probably pretty good dcp you know whatever um it's fine but the other three are probably pretty valuable on this particular ship if you put them on a destroyer uh, you'd still have smoke you'd still have hull repair if it's of high enough tier things like that so those three are pretty valuable um like i said i run mine on venezia where do you run your sansonetti scott what do you do with sansonetti uh yeah he's my venezia captain right now but he'll be my rigolo captain once uh next month once the rm I'm going to be tempted uh, to move mine over to. Yeah, once those destroyers, I, I use him right now on Luca Torigo and uh, Cunaberte and all those. I don't use him on FR25 for what that's worth, but that's totally a weird fringe conversation. Um, so <laughs> so up until this point, though, I've used him exclusively on Venezia. Um, I did not move him to the battleships because I don't think he benefits the battleships as much as he did the cruisers. And I really think he benefits the destroyers a ton uh, just because of uh, rapid fire yeah um, for the confederate that's a little harder to get one of those destroyers but far reach i proc every time i take him out in a destroyer unless i just totally potato it you get a kill and then the gun shoot further and that's a boon and um the concealed reserves happens in the destroyers as well getting 100 main battery hits in those if you're working those guns uh like you should be that's a gunboat line right so you're yep. gonna get that one yeah. and that's a big benefit too for for the cruiser or for the destroyer line because you'll get more of the smokes and you'll get your speed boost which is great um his uh, you know and on top of that like his his actual benefit skills right his enhanced skills um that's the place where he's awesome for the cruisers is that one point gun feeder skill this that one, he yeah. has yeah that is so awesome on venezia because venezia has got a long reload and being able to 75 percent switch over from sap to ap it's a um, 21 second reload yeah and then when so that reload is so when you do that in, it's like four or five seconds or instead to like switch yeah. your ammo type instead of 12 or whatever it would be if you had gun feeder it's awesome and yeah, and on so the awesome. on the destroyers 
I don't take that because it's not as big a deal. But his other skill, Swift Fish buff For that gives you 7% yeah. torpedo speed instead of 5, that's helpful on the destroyers because the Italian destroyers have really slow torpedoes. Yep. So he's great, and he'll be my Rogolo captain um, once, yeah. uh, you know, next patch when I can get uh, Rogolo. He'll he'll be moving there, and then I'm going to have to figure out what to do with Venezia. <laughs> I know. I, that's one of the things that kind of makes me hesitate, but I think I'm going to play the DDs more than I play the cruisers. I like Venezia a lot, actually. I really enjoy the Italian cruiser line, uh, but I don't find myself reaching for those ships as often as I probably will in Destroyer, just because of my, my preferences yeah. there. But um, So yeah, I'll have to move them over, and then when I come in here, we'll see. I got, look at all these tens and sixes. We got captains for days that we can put on here, so we'll put something yeah, and else. I don't, I don't use him on Napoli because I feel like my Napoli build is enough different from my Venezia build that I didn't use him there. And so I play Napoli a lot more than I do Venezia. So what oh, that'll enable me to do is once I he's see. the Regola captain, then I'll change his cruiser build to be for Napoli and I'll get more run out of him on that ship. So all in all, you know, I'll probably, I'll probably use him more than I do now that he's kind of quarantined on Venezia. I like Venezia. It's just a ship that I never reach for. Yeah, um, whenever I play it, I have a good time. But like, I'm the same as you. I don't just don't play it all that often. So I'd, I'd probably pull them over. Uh, I don't run Luigi on battleships either, uh, Frost Knight. And I think, you know, 100 gun hits is hard to get in a battleship, right? Um, destroying a ship, you'll destroy ships with a battleship. That's not a problem. And then main battery reload time um, after you get Confederate. You might get Confederate in a battleship as well. Uh, I, I think all those things are a little bit easier to do, at least for me on Venezia. I can't speak for you. So if you're having success with him on battleships, go, go, go. You know, Don't let us tell you how to live your life. Um, <laughs> let's grab uh, Halsey next. Now, I have Halsey on my Alaska. I am dramatically underusing Halsey. He basically runs on uh, Alaska and Congress for me, and that's about it. Um, but uh, let's take a look at Halsey. So his implacable talent um, is when you get a Confederate achievement, it speeds up some stuff. Squadron prep time, main battery reload time, and torpedo reload time. I'm using him on a ship that doesn't have torpedoes, uh, but Confederate's not easy to get, right? Like we said, it's gonna be something you're gonna have to work on getting, um, and you're not really gonna be 100% in control of that. The enemy ship's movements are gonna be a contributor when you get Confederate. Now, some players might be able to print out Confederates like, uh, like there's no problem getting them, but that's not for everybody. Um, once per battle, the Devil Strike achievement, which is also hard to do, especially with a ship that has a long reload, like my Alaska, um, it's going to reduce your detectability range. Um, you could do it. Um, and so, you know, when you can get that reduction, that's pretty cool. That might be something you could do easily in a Des Moines, or more easily, I should say, in a Des Moines with a faster reload. Um, how about your Halsey, Scott? Where do you employ him, and uh, why? Based on when skills too. When right? I com yeah, based on when I completed the campaign, Halsey. So this is another note about Halsey. All the other captains we've talked about, when you acquire them, are ten points. Halsey and Yamamoto, oh, yeah. because you you acquire them through their own campaigns, are both fifteen points when you get them, which is so awesome. It's and so Clyde awesome. has many videos describing how much that is great. Um, <laughs> I do. <laughs> we talk about uh, plug lot. plug the YouTubes and and so uh, where I use Halsey based on when I got him and where I was in my progression through the game is he's my gearing captain, which maybe doesn't benefit his uh, it really doesn't benefit his special skills or not his special skills but his um, enhanced talents at all. Like I don't use grease the gears or gun feeder on gearing. Um, yeah, yeah. I have procked untraceable his double strike talent with gearing once. Uh, which was awesome because it made Gearing's detection get even lower. And I was like, this is awesome. And it was great. And we were playing on Ocean at the time, which was just outstanding. Oh, man. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, you like 5.3 at that It was point. really low. Like, it was oh great. I'm sure we lost, but it was amazing. I remember when it went off. I was just so happy. Anyway, so, That's um, rad. if I use him on American torpedo boats, which there aren't a ton of, like, I use him on, like, Monahan. But anyway, um, where I really use him is he's my Ohio captain. Uh, I, I, I have him built specifically for Ohio, Georgia, and Massachusetts. So when, you, when you're talking about American battleships, there's there's two tech tree lines, but then there's the real American battleship line, which is the the premiums, right? And so um, Halsey's my Ohio captain. He's my, he's my Georgia captain. He's my uh, Massachusetts captain. He's my Oklahoma captain. 
Uh, I also use him on uh, like Puerto Rico. I think I had a build for him. His cruiser build is for like Alaska and Puerto Rico. And so he gets used all over the place. He might have been my first 21 point captain because of that. Mm, um, yeah. That said, on all those other things I'm describing, on the battleships and big cruisers, his grease the gears bonus and his gun feeder bonus are awesome. Uh, that gun feeder one is the same one that Santinetti has that makes the gun feeder 75% instead of 50%. So that's great when you want to swap ammo types on a battle like on Ohio or Massachusetts to get to HE for uh, destroyer purposes and being able to do that really quick. It's great. Uh, making grease the gears better on battleships is great. It's good on Alaska and Puerto Rico as well. Yeah. I, his his thing where you're like, if you get Confederate, your life goes crazy. I don't think I've ever procced that. I I don't know how many times I've gotten Confederate. Um, it's not in. It's never been with him. I don't think I've ever procced that. Uh, that's something. If you want to see that, go scour YouTube for Unicums that use him. And you'll. I'm most recently I'm thinking of like Trendloss using it or somebody getting you know Halsey on on uh, Forrest Sherman uh, getting a Confederate and then the guns. Uh, the reload on the guns actually was so fast they were firing before they were firing. Uh, it was, <laughs> Wait a minute. It was just, Hang on. Yeah, exactly. Hold on. Yeah. I have a question. The, the, the gun reload <laughs> got so low that the shells were actually firing from the future. It was incredible. It was yeah, incredible. exactly. They're coming through a vortex. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, all of Halsey's stuff's hard to proc. We talked about him. He's one of the early captains that's available. He's he's hard to proc because they didn't want to make him too powerful. Uh, but I think he's really cool. And the, one of the cool things about Halsey is he's free and he comes with 15 points. And 15 points is not quite halfway to the 3 million XP that you need to put a captain up to 21. Uh, but it's a huge chunk of the way, a huge chunk of the way. So definitely recommend if you're not working on the Halsey campaign, and if you've got ships of appropriate tier, give it a shot. Because um, even if you just use them as a vanilla captain and don't ever proc anything, that's a huge bump to getting a captain um, uh, up to 21 if you haven't already. So that's Halsey. Um, he does have a couple of talents, Grease the Gears, which is 20%. Um, and then he's got the 75% gun feeder as well. I should probably have the gun feeder on my Alaska. Alaska's got a long reload. And if you need to switch between AP and, and uh, uh, HE, that's probably worth doing. And my captain's, my Halsey's only up to 16 points. I only recently started uh, trying to really actively uh, put some XP on him. But again, I only run him on a couple of ships. So I've been thinking about doing um, a video uh, not a video. Well, it might become a video. I've been thinking about rearranging how I do my captains and trying to provide some uh, some logic to that. Um, and if I do, I'll share my findings with with folks on Discord and on YouTube and, and probably in Twitch as well. Um, and that may promote Halsey to a slightly better position in the American um, tech tree here for me. We'll go take a look at Yamamoto, who I have on Kitakaze. Um, let's talk about uh, Yamamoto's talents. So he's got this second wind talent, which has a picture of a Kraken on it. So you can imagine that if you unleash a Kraken, you get a 120 second reload, uh, uh, I'm sorry, hit point gain of 0.4%. So we were gushing over there a second ago about Kuznetsov's 30 second hull repair with a 0.25% hit points raise. This one is so much better. It is hilarious, but you have to kill five ships to get it. So it's incredibly hard to do. And I've literally only seen it done once and it was on somebody else's ship. It wasn't even me, <laughs> which was awesome. Squadron preparation time. If you're doing airplanes, it gets improved as well. Main battery reload time goes down 34%. Why? It's so crazy. And that appears to not be limited in time. Like, it's just forever. It's down yeah, 34%. it's just till the end of the match. Which is crazy. Torpedo reload time, 16%. Huge benefit, but you've got a Kraken in it, right? So, like, if you put Yamamoto on, like, a something where you can print Krakens more frequently, like a Kamikaze or something down at Tier 5, uh, you'd be absurd. But, of course, it's more fun up at higher tiers. Uh, emergency reserve, uh, we've got this as well. If you get first blood, uh, you'll get an extra consumable of the types listed below, and that's gonna change depending on the ship you put them on. Thomas says, I got it once and it is mad on Haragumo. I'm sure it is. Did it once on key, then the match immediately ended. Yeah, that's the problem with that one is it's gonna be for two minutes you're gonna have this incredible um, ship. And then the enhanced talents, uh, preventative maintenance is 45% instead of 30, and then the, sh the grease the gears is 20%. 
Um, Scott, I, what do you what do you think about uh, Yamamoto? Um, again, uh, based on when I finished the campaign and what line I was working for me, he's my uh, Yamamoto. He's my Yamato captain. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think, I don't even know if I really. I mean, he may not even have a destroyer build on him, which is probably uh, a detriment. I should be using him on Fujin and Kamikaze for for grins, but I don't. Um, I use my Shima captain down there because they have uh, more points. Right now, my Yamamoto is only at 19 points. So. Um, he's pretty good on on uh, on uh, Yamato though. With that, grease the gears. Um, that helps with the glacial turret traverse. And so yeah, for me, nice. he's a standard. He's a standard survivability battleship build, and I use him on Yamato and Musashi and Shikishima and I don't know whatever you know Mutsu and you know whatever other premium. <laughs> battleships exist um he gets yeah. work in that role um i think i also use him on like azuma and and yoshino uh, because my zao captain i think i think he's only like 18 points anyway so i think he's okay his skill i've never procked that crack in one and if i did i i have i could that the, the video you posted recently to YouTube uh, where we had a, a, a really big game and I had six kills. That's one of the few times I can remember getting a Kraken and then getting a, you know, still playing a long time or a relatively long time after the Kraken. Um, yeah, that was more often than not. Play, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, more often than not uh, when I play and I don't so I'm not bathing in Krakens, folks. But if I do get a Kraken, a lot of times it's right near the end of a match. And so I wouldn't get full benefit from this. Um, I doubt I've, I think maybe the most kills I've ever had in Yamato is maybe three or four. I don't think I've ever had a crack in Yamato. So I don't know if I'll ever see that one go off. Um, the emergency reserve one, I think is a lot more likely to proc, especially if you use him in destroyers. Like I think he's great in Shimakaze. Mm. Um, uh, I think he's great in Haragum. I think he's great in Kitakaze. I think he's great for some of that stuff for destroyer work where you can get that yeah. first kill. You'd probably see that in Zhao if you used him there. I don't think you could go wrong using him in one of your, you know, I think he's he's fine in any of the tier 10 uh, tech tree yeah. lines and then getting him getting him some work done there because he's because he's older. Those skills are just hard to action and they're and there's less of them and they're limiting compared to somebody like Luchens or, mm -hmm. or Cunningham who have quite a few more. Yeah, the uh, the grease the gears is valuable on pretty much any of the Japanese boats, whether it's a battleship, cruiser, destroyer, whatever. They're going to benefit from that enhanced uh, skill on the grease the gears. Uh, preventative maintenance you'll largely see on you know destroyers and stuff like that. So uh, you'll see a lot of DD captains take this. Um, so you'll see you know some some uh, perfect some benefit there. Dutchman, thank you for the gift subs, my friend. Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, so, you know, we're, we're a big fan of that here. When we switch over to the cruiser build, we see that there is not an, a, a uh, 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 preventative maintenance, right? It's not an option. So we only get grease the gears. I think that's going to be true on battleships as well. Oh, no, we do we get preventative maintenance on battleships. I don't know that you'd be really leaning towards taking that, but um, if you did, you'd be in good shape. Submarines only have preventative maintenance. So, you know, DDs is a really great spot because it's going to get use out of both of those if you decide to run two one point skills. Uh, but if you don't, uh, Grease the Gears is going to be great on any of the, the, you know, ships that have guns. So, battleships, cruisers, destroyers um, that you're going to run. So, I think Yamamoto is a solid pick for anybody. You're not likely to proc Second Wind ever. And then First Blood, you know, sometimes. Um, and so for me, I said, let's put it on Kitta. I tend to play pretty well with Kitta. I'm going to utilize a lot of those skills here. Um, and, you know, I don't use Grease the Gears yet, but I haven't really maxed this guy's out to. This guy up to 21 points. 12.9 second, 180 degree turn time. You probably don't need on Kitta, but if you're looking for something to do with that last point, why not, right? Um, and yeah, that, I think there's... Okay, I was oh, going to no, throw go in ahead. just lightly that the, the, sure. you mentioned um, how you're going to review kind of captain allocations. I, you know, the game's constantly evolving. New lines are being added. Yep. Lines change, builds change, submarine lines, things like that of that nature. And so I think it's a good idea when you have a full port and you have these kind of captains to kind of reevaluate. We talked about how, you know, like in my port, I want to move Sansonetti to Regolo with that new ship coming out. I think he works better there. I think there's a time in the future where I'm where Yamamoto Yamamoto will be reassigned to uh, a destroyer and I'll take mm. my 20 or 21 point captain or whatever I have on like Shimmer or uh, Haragumo and I'll move them to the battleship because I probably would get more use 
there, that kind of thing. And I think it's important to evaluate that as if you have these captains as you grow in the game, as you add more uh, maxed out lines, if you're, uh, you know, kind of look and see it's it's costly to reallocate those guys. But if you're really looking for opportunities to min max, um, there might be places that they're more useful. And I know with some of these captains like a Sansonetti or like a Luchin's, uh, the only thing that's unfortunate is that you can't have more than one. Yeah, I was actually going to say that about Luchins. The only thing that sucks about Luchins is that you just get one, and he's so good on so many different ships, right? When we look at those captains and we're like, oh, cool, Luchins is good on destroyers and battleships and, you know, and aircraft carriers and cruisers. And it's like, ugh, where do I put them and why can I only have one? Um, Scott, thanks a lot for, for sticking around a little bit longer today and having these conversations with me. Hopefully um, you had a good time doing this as well, and, and I'm sure we'll do it again in the future. Yeah, it's fun. All right. On. Well, thanks again, guys, for watching the video or staying for the stream. And we'll call that one to a close. Thanks so much.